Que pasa, YouTube? How's it going, everybody? So, as many of you know, Sun and Moon are literally right around the corner. We are so, so close to being able to finally get our hands on all of these new awesome Pokemon that are going to be available for us November 18th when Sun and Moon come out. Now, as many of you know, I am what you could call a quote-unquote competitive battler. So... While I do like to have fun in this game, I like to take this game seriously and try to win, which is why I like to play on Showdown a lot, and which is why I do uh, also upload a lot of Showdown lives. And I've also been playing this game since late 4th gen NU, so I have a pretty good understanding of the NU tier and every other tier as well. But NU has always been my number one favorite tier, and I think it always will be, just because it has the most fun Pokemon in my opinion and has so many different types of Pokemon combinations that you could potentially run and it was so big this generation that it had to be separated in to PU so this list is 100% my opinion this is just my thought on the best 10 Pokemon in this tier and the reason I say that is because my opinion is also based off of how well a Pokemon does in the tier and like I said I've been playing this game long enough and I've gotten back into this tier enough to know and find out my favorite Pokemon and how well they do and all that you basically what I'm saying now some of these Pokemon may be uh, listed as they are off of my personal feelings, I will make sure to tell you guys which those are. And again, this is 100% my opinion. If you do not agree with this list, then please, by all means, let me know your top 10 NU Pokemon in the comment section below. We may have the exact same Pokemon just listed differently, or you may have 10 totally different Pokemon that I do not have. I'm actually very interested to find out uh, what your guys' top 10s are, so make sure to let me know in the comment section below if you do not agree with this top 10. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and get this started. At number 10, we have a Pokemon that holds a very special place in my heart, and a Pokemon that is on here because it will always be one of my all-time favorite and new Pokemon and is still currently kind of viable and that is Musharna. Uh, Musharna is a Pokemon that saw its heyday in 5th gen and you being able to just come in be a very fat mon uh, thunder wave things be able to gain momentum with very slow baton passes being able to baton pass calm mind to uh, special attack members on your team it could just sit in there take any hit Moonlight it off, then Baton Pass if you predict your opponent to switch, or Thunder Wave something that's trying to set up in your face, or itself could also set up because it was a very, very potent Calm Mind Sweeper. And in this generation, it's not seen as much just because of the recent boost from Knockoff. It is still very, very viable, and if I would have to recommend a set for it, I would say that the Calm Mind Barrier Stored Power Moonlight set is probably your best bet, or you could even go with signal beam over barrier or baton pass over barrier and uh, psychic over stored power in that case but you have five of the team members on your team to be able to deal with dark types that your opponent may have so take them down first then let Mushurna come in barrier or calm mind first accordingly and then just keep setting up which will keep increasing the power of stored power allowing for Mushana to just be utterly terrifying for your opponent to deal with, which is why Mushana is currently number 10 on my all time and new favorite Pokemon. Because while it's still very viable, it's still just not as viable because of how potent Knockoff is. Moving on to number 9, we have the only bug type on this list, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> and a very scary bug type if you really look at it. If I saw this thing in real life, I would probably be a little bit scared. Uh, we have Scyther. Tell me you would not be terrified if you saw a almost 5 foot tall Praya Mantis with giant bladed arms like coming at you. I'm that that's actually really really scary uh scyther is a very great pokemon in the current nu tier uh the only downside of it is that 
it's four times weak to rocks. A scyther that is not dealt with or a scyther that can just freely come in and out when it pleases can just get out of hand for a team that is not prepared for it. It can run three very scary sets in the NU tier. The bulky SD set which is my personal favorite. The choice bandit set which hits like an absolute truck and the choice scarf set because it's already very fast and already has a high base physical attack stat and just makes it able to outspeed some of the more common scarfers such as Jinx and Scarf Lilligan, both of which I have used and both of which are very good scarfers, can be easily outsped by this and just picked off by U-turn or aerial lace. So Scyther can be a very, very scary mon if your opponent doesn't have stealth rocks or if they are not prepared for it or if they let their counter to this die, then late game Scyther can come in, either set up or just revenge kill everything and it can just basically put in work and be an absolute monster. At number 8 we have Skuntank. Skuntank back in the day was one half of a very popular core uh, the other half being Choice Banded Sock, which recently actually got banned from NU uh, this generation. Choice Banded Sock plus Gun Tank could just destroy so many teams uh, back in the day, and it was a core that anybody could use and just do great with. Skun Tank, of course, with access to Pursuit, would be able to eliminate your opponent's checks to choice banded sock being able to pursue trap ghost types and psychic types so sock could come in click close combat and literally just nuke whatever your opponent had left on their team uh, this generation skun tank is used more as a hazard control pokemon while still being able to pursue trap psychic types while also being able to pursue trap ghost types such as Haunter and Miss Magius. Uh, Skuntank this generation is still very very great and it can also run a good mix set with it having a base 71 special attack stat and being very speedy and having a great ability in aftermath. At number 7 we have probably one of the only um, electric types and water types on this list now that I think about it and I just kind of gave it away we have Chin Chow yeah Chin Chow is a really really great no no I'm joking no no it's it's Lantern it's Lantern Lantern I, I really really like Lantern in the NU tier it's a very great pivot mon being able to rock a pretty solid assault vest set a set that I've tried out myself it can eat special hits like an absolute monster it has access to volt switch and a move that always burns let's be honest a scald scald can also do damage did you guys know that I I recently found out scald actually does damage along with burning I just I just thought it it did burn I just thought it burned all the time but no it does damage as well like I I didn't I didn't know that until this generation so that's kind of interesting it can definitely run that move uh, if you don't want to run Assault Vest, it can still run a very great specially defensive set and it can also support your team with Thunder Wave or Heal Bell or you could even run Toxic if you don't want to run Thunder Wave and be able to uh, wear down opposing Lanterns that may be running Assault Vest or things like Mesprit or catch Lilligans on the switch in off guard or paralyze them with Thunder Wave, uh, making Lantern just that much more of a great NU Pokemon and a very great Pokemon that can fit on just about any type of team. It can be a great momentum gaining Pokemon thanks to the fact that it has access to Volt Switch and yeah Lantern can be a great team player. Lantern is basically the NU team player since Seismitoad is no longer NU. Uh, so yeah if you're looking for a solid bulky water or bulky electric type in the NU tier then Lantern is your go-to Pokemon. At number six we have a brother to one of the members in the Durham Drudagons. Uh, maybe the little brother but not the youngest brother, the middle brother actually uh, if you really look at it and that is Regirock. Regirock has one of the highest base physical defense stats in the tier. This thing is insanely bulky like literally this thing is this thing can take like any physical hit to the point where you don't even need to run physical defense EVs. You can just run a lot of spadef EVs 
and just not even touch the defensive ease. And the reason why this is listed uh, kind of high, uh, again, is just kind of personal reasoning. Right on, while it is listed higher in the viability threat, I personally like Regirock over right on. The only downside to Regirock is that it can't stop your opponent from being able to Volt Switch as where right on can stop your opponent from Volt Switching. Right on can also set up late game, but Regirock has access to Thunder Wave, so I believe Regirock can act more of a supporting role to your team as where Rhydon can act more of a solo role if you get what I'm trying to say because Regirock can get up rocks while also being able to paralyze things or a toxic them. Regirock is a really great Pokemon in the NU tier, a uh, really great supporter for any team that wants a solid stealth rocker and may not have problems with your opponent being able to Volt Switch. And it can also stop Scyther, which of course Scyther was number 9. So yeah, Regirock, a really great fat supported Mon for any team. Moving on down the line to number 5, to the middle of the list, we have a very, very fat Mon. A Mon that I love to nickname after a wrestler, or my good friend, Kyo, and a Pokemon that has seen a lot of popularity this generation and that is Hariyama yes Hariyama is this is literally how Kyo looks like in real life um, that's exactly what it looks like but Hariyama saw a lot of play early on in Oras Enyu because of the fact that it has an insane HP it has a hundred and forty four HP that is crazy that is insane that that's fat I mean, look, it's fat, but just, that's crazy. And it has a pretty decent uh, base 60 spadef stat, uh, along with a very great ability, actually two very great abilities in the form of Guts and its more popular one, Thick Fat. Thick Fat allows for Hariyama to be an amazing check to fire types in this tier. This stops Pyroar basically in its track, and with it having such a high base HP stat, it can not even run HP, and it can run attack EVs, it can run defensive EVs, or it can run a lot of spadef with defense EVs and attack EVs, and some HP EVs are speed EVs. Basically what I'm trying to say is that Assault Vest was like 100% made for Hariyama in the NU tier. Assault Vest is basically the bread and butter of Hariyama in the NU tier. They go hand in hand, like in they're basically married to each other. That is how well Assault Vest goes with Harry Up. Moving on down to number four, we have probably, in my opinion, one of the best overall Pokemon in the NU tier. And by overall, I, I don't mean the overalls that you wear. Uh, what I mean is that this Pokemon is just so versatile and it just it can fit so many roles and it's another psychic type and that is Mesprit. Mesprit has amazing stats for it being an NU Pokemon which makes Mesprit that much better of a Pokemon. This thing can run so many supportive moves. It can run a Calm Mind offensive move, it can be banded, it can be spexed, it can be scarfed, it could even be like trick scarf or trick band or something like that. It has healing wish, it has U-turn, it can learn rocks. You basically get the idea. Mesprit overall is just one of the best Pokemon in this tier. The best in your Pokemon, maybe not. Another reason why it's number four. But Mesprit can just fill so many roles that you need any team to be filled. I definitely recommend you all to use the Emotion Pokemon. Moving on to number three. Yes, we finally made it to the top three. So thank you to everybody who has stuck with me uh, through this top 10 so far. Uh, again, let me know what your top 10 and you Pokemon are in the comment section below. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into the last three Pokemon. So at number three, we have a Pokemon that just really, really fought for number one. This Pokemon really fought against my number two and my number one pick to be my favorite and you Pokemon. And that is Kangaskhan. Now Kangaskhan is another Pokemon that holds a very special place in my heart. 
But the reason why it's not only listed so high and why it's ranked so high in the viability ranking by Smogon, it's just so good in NU still. It did not lose a single step transitioning from 5th gen NU to 6th gen NU. Kangaskhan, I think, will always be one of the best NU Pokemon just because normal stab is insanely good and it has such a great physical attack stat and a really solid speed stat and really good bulk. I've been using Kangaskhan since 4th gen. This thing is a monster. I remember I used to run a bulky wish set. <laughs> And I just, I love that Kangaskhan was such a monster and will always, always, like I said, hold a special place in my heart. It can be paired up with T-Spikes as well. Kangaskhan loves hazard support. So if you're running a team with rocks and spikes and you need a Pokemon that you want to be able to pick off weakened offensive threats, Kangaskhan is your go-to Pokemon. She can easily run an Adamant set with Fake Out and Sucker Punch to be able to get the priority damage off from Fake Out and still be able to pick things off with Sucker Punch and hit insanely hard with Return or Double Edge and can be fit on almost any team. Moving on to number two, the only thing that I like more than my mom's home cooked Mexican food are my hazards. I love my hazards when it comes to Pokemon. Spikes. Ooh. When I'm able to get up rocks and then get up a layer of spikes, it's it's a warm feeling. When I can get up two spikes, it's an even better feeling. When I can get up three spikes and I have my rocks up, it's it's a very great tingling sensation down below. That is how much I love my hazards. And that is exactly what this Pokemon allows me to feel. That that does not that does not sound right. Okay, that sounded better in my head and now that I think okay, that saying that out loud. Anyways, anyways, this Pokemon is amazing for being able to just hazard stack in this tier and that is Garbodor. Garbodor is able to easily just get up spikes, get up T spikes while still being able to check fighting types and take down physically offensive Pokemon. Thanks to the fact that it has aftermath and is always paired up with Rocky Helmet and if you don't want to run a Rocky Helmet you could run Black Sludge and Pain Split to be able to allow it to live a little bit longer if you want something to reliably be able to get up spikes or get up T-spikes for your fake out Pokemon or for a bulky Pokemon that your team may not be able to beat 1v1 but over time can beat 1v1. So before I get into my all time favorite 6th gen NU Pokemon, I want to say some honorable mentions Pokemon that were considered but did not quite make the top 10 cut. We have Audino, Abomasnow, Ludicolo, and of course Rhydon. Now moving on to my all-time favorite NU Pokemon. This Pokemon was recently actually suspect tested in the NU tier and some of you may already know who I'm talking about. He was actually not banned and I've used this Pokemon since 4th gen NU and since the day that I've used this Pokemon it has been probably my all-time favorite NU Pokemon and just one of my all-time favorite Pokemon in general like if I had to make just a top 10 list of my all-time favorite Pokemon this Pokemon I think would definitely be on there I love the design I love the versatility of it and I love the fact that it's just an absolute powerhouse and that is Tauros Tauros is a monster I remember using Tauros and destroying things when I first started playing 4th gen NU. I remember the substitute anger point set in 4th gen. Back in 4th gen, if your substitute got critted, then you used to get the plus six from anger point. Now, uh, they took that out of the game, so if your substitute gets critted, you don't get the boost anymore. The Pokemon itself has to get critted. I remember using that set in 4th gen NU. I remember in 
5th gen it could run a very effective scarf set because it was so fast and you could also just run adamant nature and still be able to outspeed uh, scarf sock or scarf jinx or scarf lilligan and deal so much damage as well Tauros can now run a very great sheer force set because sheer force while being able to negate the secondary effect of moves gives you a 30% damage increase making Tauros's stab in rock slide that much more powerful and like I said normal type in general is just great stab it can run fire blast for steel types such as pharaoh seed and steelix and then you could also run iron tail to be able to hit mega audino or archaeops tauros can just run so many different moves while it may look like a one trick bull it can really just run so many moves and catch your opponent off guard and it's so fast and it can outspeed so many offensive Pokemon in the NU tier while just hitting like an absolute monster. That's just another reason why Tauros is easily just my all-time favorite NU Pokemon. So yeah guys, that is basically the list. Again, let me know what your top 10 NU Pokemon are in the comment section below. If you did not agree with mine, then by all means, let me know as well. So with that being said, guys, make sure to hit the like button down below and be on the lookout for top 10s in the other tiers leading up to the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. So thank you all for watching. Later, everybody. Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared, I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain Tears are hoping, I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real